Hey folks, welcome back to Pokemon Y. We're here in the Comarine Pokemon Center, and uh, we're about to head down south to Route 13, um, and kind of complete our loop back to Lumio City. And we started by heading south-ish, um, went all around the coast, and now we're coming back and gonna hit the north side. But there's a problem. The gate uh, is closed due to that power outage that was uh, uh, troubling the city the last time that we were there. But the power plant is on Route 13, which is the route we're going to be passing, so, you know, RPG logic indicates that we will be visiting the power plant and probably addressing the problem. Black Sludge. Black Sludge is a... It's a, it's a situational um, item, but it's one that can play some tricks on your opponent if they're not expecting it. Um, basically, it acts as leftovers, but only for poison types. If you give it to a poison type, they will be healed um, 1 16th of their total health every turn. If you give it to someone else, they will be poisoned. Um, so if a, an opponent tries to steal your item, they'll have uh, an unfortunate incident. Anywho, these two are back. And they're also here to upgrade our Pokedex one more time. And now we have uh, maxed out the capacity for the Kalos Dex. It now has room for, I think, 450 Pokémon. It's kind of wacky. Kind of bonkers. But anyway, let's head down into Route 13. The Lumios Badlands. No fancy French terminology here, unfortunately. Anyway, when you first enter, it's like, oh, this doesn't seem so bad. There's grass and uh, trees and everything looks nice. And then you go down and it's like, oh my goodness. There's, there's tumbleweeds, and there's rocks, and there's sentient uh, dust piles. Those sentient dust piles are, in fact, wild Pokémon. Hey, hey, there you go, come on. But uh, in these dust piles, you'll find a variety of ground types. Um, you'll find Trapinch, Gibble, and I think Dugtrio. Um, so if you have a water type or a grass type, they'll do better here. Maybe less so against Gibble. Now, I mainly remember this route because I found a tr uh, shiny trap inch here once, and that was pretty hype. Shiny trap inch are cool. Anyway, um, because this is kind of a desert-y area, it's a little more open than some of the routes we've seen. There's a lot of kind of going left and right. And then there's also the wind. See how we're really not making very good progress? And then we got attacked by a Pokemon. Um, you can sort of tell based on the kind of particles flying on the air that there was wind blowing against us. And every so often the wind will change directions and you'll go fast if you follow that direction. Ooh, those give nice experience. So, like, wind blowing this way? Woo! That's fun. Anyway, a variety of uh, items to be found here. Smooth Rock uh, extends the duration of Sandstorm, I believe. Uh, which things like Gibble on this route love to use. Speaking of which... Um, if you are interested in having a Gibble on your team, here is a great place to get one. You know, this game is, uh, it's kind of nice about giving you the, uh, what are usually late game dragon type Pokemon, kind of early. Um, you could get Axew before the second gym. You can get Gibble here. Um, I don't remember about the other ones. Anyway, that looks like part of the power plant. But uh, a pass is needed to unlock the door. And a little bit of spoiler here. 
We are never going to get that pass. We're never going to go in there. That's just, it's never, it's never accessible to the player. You know, it seems like it would be uh, an event, a special event. You get a, I don't know, a mystery gift or something. And you can go and explore a new dungeon. But uh, never happened. They never did anything with it. So, kind of weird. Anyway, this, this wind, this wind, kind of troublesome. Let's see if the bike is any better. Not really. That thing wants to attack me. Um, just so you know, using repels does not get rid of those things, but, uh... Um, but if you stand in one place, they will go away. And this, uh, this wind is preventing me from building enough, uh, building enough momentum to actually get on this thing. So I'm gonna fight this thing to get it out of my way. Uh, and then I'm gonna try to approach from the left and use momentum there, and that might work. Oh, come on. What if I do... Uh. Alright, I really... I'm already sick of these freaking dust cloud things. And again, repels don't do anything about them. So there's really nothing I can do other than, like, get, get good at dodging them. You know, the plus side is, if you want a Gibble, you're probably going to find one. In fact, you're going to find one if you don't want to find one, too. So... Alright, come on. Come on. There we go. See? That was totally worth it. Yep, need a pass there. Nothing we can do. I'm kind of going to trace the outside of the desert here, and then uh, worry about the middle. Just because I'm pretty bad at navigation. How do I get that? There we go, okay. I was afraid I'd have to do something crazy. So yeah, this is just kind of the route of the elements conspiring against me, apparently. And you know, one reason uh, I have Vivi up in the lead here is that these Trap Inch, I think at least like half of them um, have the ability Arena Trap, and so do Doug Trio, I want to say, um, which prevent you from fleeing if your Pokémon is on the ground. So I think flying types and uh, uh, levitators can escape, and Pokemon with run away, for example. But if you say led with uh, Dana, then you would be really screwed because you wouldn't be able to switch out to Pokemon that could flee. Um, you wouldn't be able to Volt switch out to something that could flee because you'd be attacking ground type with an electric type move and you wouldn't be able to flee because of arena trap and you would just have to wait for Dana to faint and that would be a terrible situation to be in and I would hate to be in it. Okay, anyway. Pro tip, good to know. Alright, I'm gonna follow the path here. I don't think the dust clouds can get onto the path. And then here's our issue. Um, the gate won't open, it's an electric gate apparently, um, until we restore the power. But it's running. So, uh, something's up. Alright, let's see what's up here. Alright, that didn't... That was, that was pointless. Let's get that item. Oh, we're gonna have to come around from the top, it looks like. Oh, we're gonna need Rock Smash. I don't, do I have Rock Smash? I don't think I. I don't think I have Rock Smash. Ah, whatever. I won't worry about it. Let's talk to this wild Pokemon. Oh, 
I might need to edit out some of these wild encounters because they are just so, so repetitive and redundant. Okay. Talk to this scientist here. Uh-oh. Team Flare is here. True fact. Alright. There's a pro strat right there. Apparently, rails are immune to wind. Sunstone, very nice. Also, I think, if I'm not crazy... Yeah, this kind of uh, section down here is... Uh, you're blocked from the wind, so you can actually go quickly left or right, regardless of where the wind is blowing. So that's cool. Also, let me try some. It's better. We can run. And it's a little easier to avoid those things. But not perfect. Alright, alright. We're almost we're almost to the place, I think. Okay, can't go in there. Great. Here we go. There's a guy standing guard, which means it's uh, probably where we want to be. So yeah, Route 13, actually, surprise, it's a dungeon. We're gonna enter into the power plant and take on Team Flare. And hopefully, restore power to Lumios. Alright, let's see if this side beam will be a one-hit KO. Nice. So, I don't know if it's going to come up, um, but I'm declaring it now. Um, in addition to not using the experience share from here on out, unless I really deem it necessary, which I don't think I will, um, I've also decided that I'm going to not use healing items, um, like mid-route, and see what I can do uh, without healing and just, like, maybe... I'll, I'll face some danger by having my Pokemon faint from attrition. Nine steps east of where I'm standing. How very, very specific. Oh, and we have Dowsing Machine, so that makes it easier. Ta-da! That's, uh... Almost as pathetic as the Team Rocket guy who um, drops the lift key in Celadon. Almost. God, it would be really a shame if that happened. I sure hope it doesn't happen. Alright, let's head in. Welcome to the Kalos Power Plant. It's got some groovy ass music. Also, I like the the blue color scheme as a as a nice counterpoint to the very red desert that we were in. Got some greens and some purples as nice accents. So yeah, overall, this is, uh, this is a pretty straightforward dungeon, from what I remember. I was looking at some maps earlier, and it's like, wow, you just kind of walk straight through. There are no weird, confusing teleporters, either.
Yeah, this this guy's gonna have a bad time. You know, I, I put Vivi up front because I wanted uh, I wanted her to be able to flee from the arena trap Pokemon. But I think she might actually just be really well suited to fighting Team Flare Grunts. Because they're using a lot of dark and fighting and poison types. Hmm, oh, redirecting. Hmm, oh, I see. And I assume this is the staff being held hostage. So the question is, what are they doing with all that power? Well, at least he's honest. I, that is so overpriced, I cannot justify spending any of my limited cash on that. And again, I'm not using healing items, so we'll see how that goes. Poor guy. Okay. Finding some more plates. That one powers up electric moves, as you might expect. And there's another crow gunk. It will uh, hail in comparison to my butterfly. That's such a weird kind of difference in the amount of experience you get from the Krogunk versus the Golbat. I know, it just strikes me as as odd. Ooh. This looks fancy. You're gonna have a bad time against my bug buzz. Heck, I could even use my drain and kiss on you too. I got more PP there, but oh man, drain and kiss could totally balance out the fact that I'm not using any healing items. <laughs> this might just be too much, too much for Team Flare to handle. Okay, so, we can't go right. I really like the look. This is a, I don't know, something about the almost greenish look of the metal up here. Um, Complements the yellowish orange down there. Anyway, to avoid any sort of uh, non-linearity, he's blocked off that side, so let's go this way. One of these days, one of these opponents is going to get an attack in. Maybe somebody will have fake out? Mm hmm, maybe. It's always possible. We kind of are seeing the same exact teams over and over though. Golbats and Krogunks and Scraggies. There's so much more to life than Golbats and Krogunks and Scraggies. Alright, you gonna you gonna bring some uh, some excitement into my life here? 
You know, bring something new to the table, revolutionize the fashion industry? Nah. Nah, of course not. I might just have Vivi sweep this entire place. I was considering maybe spreading the love a little bit and uh, allowing other folks to get in on the action, but I don't know. They'll have their turn. Maybe next time we run into Team Flare, I'll choose someone else to sweep the entire place. So yeah, while I kind of like the aesthetics of the area here, um, the dungeon itself, very, very straightforward. Like, very, very straightforward. Hey, you brought something exciting into my life. Thank you. You got a Swalot. Swalot is a pure poison type. Um, you can probably see it as kind of a counterpart to Muck. Um, it was introduced in Gen 3. And it's also a giant purple pile of sludge. And hey! Hey, you did something! You got an attack in! Good job! And you know what? Just as like a, uh, as a little favor to Team Flare, and again to make this a little more challenging on myself, I'm not gonna heal that poison, sorry Vivi. I'm gonna let uh, just a little bit of health tick away every time Vivi one-hit KOs an opponent. Although again, poison doesn't hurt us on the overworld anymore, so even then it's not as dangerous as it once might have been. Ooh, a Lipard! Yeah, you're doing something new all the time here. Finally. Um, and again, let's avoid the Draining Kiss, because that would counteract any poison damage. And that would make things too easy. I'm getting really cocky. Wowie zowie. Ooh, and another Swalot. Alright. This thing might get an actual real attack in. Because apparently I won uh, can't one-shot it with Psybeam. Getting close, but okay, no, alright. No, no real attacks, just, just Encore. I was hoping to see, uh, I don't know, a Sludge, or a Body Slam. But as it stands, it's just kind of using up my, uh, my PP. And someone at Game Freak was like, man, I've got a great idea for a dungeon. It's it's diamond, and there's a team player person at each corner, and a team player person on each side. It's perfect. I wonder if that poison is getting worse. I, I cannot tell. Because that did 18 damage. Let's check how much the no next one does. Because I thought Toxic uh, reset to regular poison after a battle. Yeah, I think it's I think it's staying, ste uh, staying steady. Oop, and this, uh, this is my last bug buzz. So I may have to switch to, uh, Draining Kiss the next time we run into a dark type. Heck, maybe they'll even survive the Draining Kiss because it's not Stab. Yeah, 
that's just our shortcut back, by the way. Um, but we go up for progress to, I think, this is the final confrontation in the dungeon, even. Because these people have unique models. Okay, the device. They've got a device they're powering and kind of siphoning, siphoning off energy for. Alright, it's a Hound Doom. And, uh, well, Psybeam won't do anything. And Draining Kiss is probably going to one shot it. Let's find out. Ooh, oh no, right, because Fire resists Fairy, so it's neutral. Oh man, Vivi's actually probably gonna faint. Whew, good work Vivi, you took out most of this evil organization single-handedly. And now let's bring in Petra and one-shot it with Vital Throw. There you go. So that's an admin down. Not actually that much stronger than the single grunt we found on the way here. Oh. Oh, you're not going to challenge me immediately? You're going to give me an opportunity to, to kind of hang around? Maybe use healing items if I were to do that. Well. Alright, so this lady here, Aliana, she has a name. Which means that she's probably more important than anyone else in this entire building. And I think that admin actually didn't have a unique model, it's just we haven't seen it before. Whereas Aliana does. But she doesn't have a very unique team, does she? Ooh, not bad. Not bad. Level 38, Intimidate. Nice combo there. Um, I don't think I need the agility. Okay, so maybe that uh, that flame charge is a good idea after all. Looks like this, uh, this mighty Anna just wants to kind of lower all of our stats. So attack to start with, um, and then totally counteract that by using swagger. Okay, seems legit. And then obviously the, uh, the scary face with the speed. And yeah, then just completely undo what you did with a swagger by roaring Pokemon out. That's that's a great strategy. Good work. That I I never would have thought of that. Blowing my mind here. Does this thing have an attack? Does this thing do damage? Yeah, wasn't wasn't the best thought out of plans, Aliana. Not the best laid plan. Oh hey, it's wait, who are you? I've never seen you before in my life. You look completely unfamiliar. Oh yeah, by the way, if the full healing that they gave us wasn't enough, we also get full restores. Huh. 
What mysterious strangers. I wonder if we'll ever meet them again. Okay. I was hoping there'd be, like, hidden items on the side there, but nope. Anyway, that takes care of the Lumios power plant. Um, I kind of gave it a lot of crap. I think it's actually pretty pretty for being a, you know, a very rectangular power plant electrical building. Um, but man, did not really do anything surprising. Anyway, if you come back over here um, after defeating the admins and whatnot, you can get soda, or fresh water rather, for half price. Still don't really need it. Alright. Well, that is the power plant. So let's get out of here and finish our trek to Lumio City. What's the point of that long corridor? I don't understand. Maybe just to make sure you hear the cool music uh, before you fight anybody. All right, um, hey there, scientist. Uh, oh, gosh darn it. I really want to at least search around and see if there are any more items of north that I missed. But, uh, I also really don't want to deal with any more wild Pokemon. Speaking of which... You know, I understand the desire to have uh, a different style of finding Pokémon for wild encounters. It varies up the... the overworld traversal system. But on the other hand, one of the advantages of the typical overworld traversal system, to use really pretentious language like that, where wild Pokemon just up here um, is that they are completely opt out because of repels you know with this system there there is actual skill involved with avoiding things and I don't like things that have a skill barrier I don't know about you anyway there's a PP up um, and I don't have rock smash with me I'm like 99% sure Am I, am I correct about that? Yeah. Alright. Uh, I'll look and see if that's something I actually care about. It's probably not. For now, let's just go to Lumius. Who's, who's this? They're very tall. Well, that was weird. Anyway, like I was saying, um, okay, now that's really taunting me. I'm really curious. Um, like I was saying, time to head down to Lumio City. And welcome to the north side of Lumios. We've got an entire northern boulevard. We've got a bunch of avenues that have opened up now that the power is back on. <sighs> we got a lot to explore. Um, I don't know who it was. It was those two mysterious masked strangers, but I don't know their names. Alright, you got a nice show. We're gonna see a cool thing. Um, maybe that won't activate till we actually go down to the center. In which case, let's put it off till the next episode and find the Pokemon Center. Oh. <sighs> okay, alright, fine. Just, just want to go to the Pokemon Center. Hey, there's a team player person. 
What are you doing here? Okay, okay. Can I make it to that Pokemon Center without activating the cutscene? Yes, I can. Alright, cool. So, that takes care of our adventures in Lumios Badlands. And next time we are going to be touring all around Lumios North Side. And possibly more. There's a lot to see. Um, but anyway, for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.